Shishira Nevdet, yeah. Mark Suba, Tomoko Furusawa. Yeah. Видите, как все делается? На месте попробуйте. With Iran in the south. Barev. We are in Yerevan today. So in our last video, you saw us using Yerevan car to explore the city, and we discovered that we can also do a day trip using that car. And today. We signed up for a little shared tour uh, visiting Garni and a few other places just outside of Yerevan city. And this is free if you have Yerevan card. So we so, are making use of it fully. <laughs> yeah, so that's why now we are here. This is actually the first stop. Uh, in the morning, we just walked up to the Cascade Square and there we got on the bus. Uh, the, our guide was very, very nice. Uh, she even gave us a few snacks. Uh, like, what is this? This is Armenian desert. And now we are at the very first stop and uh, this is supposed to be a viewpoint for Mount Ararat. Uh, but yeah, there's a very important monument here. Let's go learn about it. Now we are at the Charon's Ark. From this ark, you're supposed to see Mount Ararat clearly from here. But today it's a little foggy and hazy, we are unable to see. This ark is dedicated to the poet Charon. He used to come sit here with this beautiful view and write the poems. <laughs> The participants of the Second World War and more than 600,000 Armenians took part in that war. Hatch cars. Hatch is translated as cross and car is translated as stone. A cross carved on the stone, as you can see, because the main element of this monument is the cross in Armenia. In other A part of the monastery is carved in the cave. Part of the monastery, I will show you more. Announce those people who made donations to the monastery. Yeah, to donators and here you can see their families even. The bigger cross is the head of, it symbolizes the head of that person and now the smaller crosses you see like the sons or the brothers of that person.
Wow. The water from this spring is so delicious. It's uh, what they call as mountain water here in Armenia. But the water isn't just mountain water. I believe it does come from a spring. And this water has intense medical benefits because of which back in the olden days, many people used to come here and take a bath with this water and they used to miraculously heal. And because this was inside the church, obviously there was a lot of holy belief around it that it was a magical water. But in reality, even today, this water has a lot of minerals and elements that make the water not only uh, good for health, but also very tasty to actually drink. And it's ice cold. Yeah. Round thingy in the autumn. Look at the trees, they're so colorful. Um, you know the place for the temple was chosen not by chance. If you walk that way, that way, maybe you saw that. So from both sides there is deep gorge. No mixture was used with the help of metal clubs. The way it was the following. So holes were made on the stones. Uh, metal clumps were put into them and a new stone with holes was put on it. In this way, the stones were fixed. With the same way, the temple was built also. So this behind us is the Garni temple. It's the only pagan temple left, not just in Armenia, but all of USSR. So it's uh, of very special importance. Paganism, uh, if you don't know, is quite similar to modern day Hinduism, where uh, elements of nature, elements of the world of, of life are worshipped. So here, the uh, inside this temple, which almost looks like a very Roman <laughs> yeah. monument, uh, that used to be a temple and it dates back to a very long time ago. The primary reason why the temple was built at the very edge of a gorge was to prioritize protection and with that they also uh, the the king in whose name this temple was built also wanted to use this as a summer palace and a house eventually when armenia did uh, you know convert to christianity as a state religion uh, this temple was supposed to be brought down as was every other pagan temple destroyed however because the king was using this as a summer palace it was not touched and even though a Christian church was built right next door to it, the yeah. temple managed to survive until I think the 17th century or so when an earthquake destroyed it. This temple was actually dedicated to sun and then the idol of the sun, which whom they call as Mitra, is actually stored in the history museum in Yerevan. This was very interesting and something which was very close to our Hindu temples. So we enjoyed the learning about it and now they are going to take us to the bottom of the gorge where apparently there is something more unique. You want, you can keep it.
Now we have come to something known as Symphony of Stones. It's actually in a gorge beside this river and it looks so unique. So you remember that pagan temple we were just at? That's actually up there on top of this gorge. And right now we are here at the Symphony of Stones which is regarded as one of the greatest natural monuments here in Armenia. And that is because the rock formation here looks like those musical instruments, like a xylophone if you will. Nowhere else in the world you actually get to see something of this scale located in just a, a regular gorge down the street. So the story behind it is actually pretty interesting. Uh, I think when Ararat, the, the volcanic mountain here in this region blew up, a lot of the volcano's lava kept flowing all around until one point where due to the obviously freezing weather here it began to settle and solidify right here on the walls of this gorge and when that happened because of the speed at which the lava was dripping down and also solidifying because of the freezing temperature this shape was created and over the years because of the rain and water flowing through it's like now it looks a little more polished but imagine how it would have looked back then. Yeah, it definitely looks grand and very much like a musical instrument, that's for sure. And the dough of lavash is made exceptionally of water, salt and flour. Nothing else is added there. And I could see that every time she preserved a small piece of the dough for the next time, the sour dough, yeah? And it would make the new dough ripe. And I call it the dance of Armenian lavash because it dances in the air. Then it's put on the pillow on rafata and lavash is baked in honey. Let's enjoy this part, these moments. That is great. For me, yeah, that is uh, something special in all this process. Uh, lavash is baked in honey. This peat round shape, having the shape of the sun, by the way, is called toni in Armenian language. Tonir, tanur, ton, tandur, in different ways it's called. We make fire right inside of it, and then we bake lavash on the wall of Tonish. The temperature when it, the fire is just made is really high, 500, 600 degrees. That's why it takes only a few seconds, lavash, to be, uh, to be baked. To be... Yeah, no yeast. We do not add yeast into the dough of lavash. Now we're going to do, don't eat lavash yet, please. I'm going to show you how to make our herbs, whatever you like. This is not salt. That's why I'm not here. It's all breakage. Basic but real nice. Thank you. Welcome. And now we're back in Yerevan. They dropped us off near the cascade and now we need to go find something to eat. What do we do? What do we do? Maybe we should go to that 
ఎంజాయ్ So we're going to go there, eat some food and then uh, probably see you in the next vlog. Bye. So, thanks for coming with us today. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye. We'll just I come here, you come here. నేను మార్చుకోబడు ఇంకేదైనా అంతలా పార్చాలా అంటే అబ్బా అబ్బా